take over the lead. Luke Donald can win this tournament today and recapture his number one ranking in the world. Donald for a birdie at the six. Three birdies in the first nine holes for him. Out in three under 33 at 11. Seven. He was out in three under 33. Now at 10 under. And here is Luke Donald. Gary back at it again. A good start for him. We mentioned out in three under 33. And trying to pick up yet another one here. Well, he's putted the ball beautifully all week. He's gotten in trouble a couple of times with some loose iron shots. But holding the finish. Look at that. Just perfect with the, the putter. I mean, just impressive. The tempo of the putting stroke is really on. So Donald moves within one, tied with Els, Piercy, who's in over Snake Pit, the final three holes here. Over at the 11th hole, Luke Donald put him years in uh, this eight for the week. Isn't that amazing? You know, a guy that obviously doesn't hit the ball that far just goes to show you if you keep it in play off the tee, play your game, play to your strength, which is obviously his wedges and uh, his putter. Uh, you can make birdies on par fives. Who had a nice sound. A nice little funk. That means he's used the bounce of the wedge just perfectly. And you know why the world eight shots last year at Congressional. I mean, he matches him pretty much yeah, in the last couple of years or so. I agree, Dan. I mean, very underappreciated, I think, Luke Donald has been. Uh, you know, Rory McIlroy, a little one of the other leaders. And Luke Donald, you see the whole location, and again, that uh, illusion there with well, the bunker. it is, yeah. You can see the uh, five or six yards of rough between the bunker and the green. And you know, these guys all have the exact yardage, but when you're looking at this hole from the fairway, it's slightly uphill, very deceptive. See to come up a little bit short. Like that. Oh, there you go. Another one of those subtle designs by Larry Packard. Yeah, it's, it's just a great goss to, uh, you know, kind of give the players a different look. With a 62, which was one off the course record, still has a chance. Over at 12, third for Donald. Straightforward bunker shot. About five or six feet down below the level of the green. And once again, McDonald produces a very good shot. Up to 14. Thank you very much. Over at the 12th, Luke Donald trying to stay a part of that four-way tie for the lead. Now very straightforward here. Just a little right-to-left break. <laughs> Sneaks it in the right side. It's okay now. Seeing some really good bunker play this week from now. That's what's on Luke Donald's mind. The win will get him all yeah. the way back to world number one. Doesn't have a long way to go, Frank. He's at number two. <laughs> but that'd be pretty impressive uh, just after losing it to get it right back. Seven on. There's a little bit of a wind change. It's behind now, and you cannot afford to go long. Gary, it's been tough to get the ball up and down from the behind this flag. Yeah, just what, uh, about four paces of green if you go long and you have to land the ball on a down slope. So, uh, you know, in a perfect world, Frank, I mean, that. These closing holes, okay. uh, you know, obviously yeah. 14 is a birdie hole, but uh, a tee shot here that's a little short and a little right leaves a nice uphill putt. Clean strike. Is it enough? Luke Donald seven iron safely on it. 13. This to tie from 40 feet. Already five under for his round. Should have a pretty good swing to the right, shouldn't it, Frank? Well, Come if it turns, it's good. Yeah. He's just a threes. To a left. Off the tee and then found out all of a sudden that he couldn't work his irons the way he normally did. Over to 14. A very poor layout for Luke Donald. He's yet to birdie this hole this week. It's one of the easiest par fives on the golf course. And Gary, with this sort of overseed starting to dry out, it's going to make it very difficult to judge the distance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, normally when this overseed is is in full bloom, I guess, Frank, you know, you kind of the grass it become is sticky, and it's very rare to get a jumper. But the more dry it becomes, and the wispier it becomes, the, the front of it's 70. more the chance of uh, catching a little grass yeah. between the clay increases dramatically. 25. Really Donald like performance so far. Smooth front nine out and 33 added another couple. 
The hardest thing too is this hole set on the highest point on the green. It's like a little mound. That kicked in. See the slope at the top of it? It's really neat. You know this green like this? And then flatten mm. at 88 and 7. Where it stops pitching in. I'll pitch it on the upside. Yeah, so you're thinking 86 sort of so. Yeah. Yeah. You think these top caddies don't know their stuff? I mean, well, John McLaren is an example of showing his man, reassuring him of everything on the green. They know all the nuances, Dan. They spend hours knowing, knowing these golf courses. Oh, that's really nicely done. And then Frankie played the <laughs> late release. Knew exactly where to carry the ball. Well, these guys are this good. They want to know all. Luke Donald currently one behind Furyk and else trying to birdie the 14th hole for the first time this week. Frank, a putt that uh, moves pretty hard to the left, doesn't it? Uh, pretty good slope from his right. Yeah, change of speed because the first half of it, Gary, is going up and then the flat flattening out and movement to the left. So 14 has been his nemesis. Nine yard par three, 15. Luke Donald with a six iron. Right he does play downhill, so 23 feet downwind. Will it release? Uh, lands a little bit into that false front. Yes, very softly. Bogey free, five under round going. So at 15, Luke Donald has a birdie attempt to tie the 14 under number, which leads up a steep slope to start with and should move back to the right as it gets toward the hole. Never had enough. Donald will remain one back. And play a wedge third in. Luke Donald, you are entering the snake pit, 16th tee, fairway metal. <laughs> Toughest tee shot on the golf course. Yeah, it really is, Mark. Uh, water all down the right. Uh, Players tend to overcook it and play away from that. Missed the fairway left into the rougher trees, but McDonald plays it absolutely perfectly. We'll cut three wood. Win it outright with 14 under. Obviously, but, with uh, the wind's going to hold it. Should be the goal. The corner of the building. Luke Donald has just 185 after a terrific tee shot here. Whole location on the right hand side of this green today. Awkward look with those pine trees you see up ahead of Luke. It kind of forces the ball left, forces you to aim and play left. Comes up into the center of the green. Back to 15, where Luke Donald has 34 feet 2 inches for his birdie. He has been pouring them in all day long. What a good looking putt that was. Take a look at his reaction here. Looked very good a couple of feet from the hole. So 16 fails to yield a birdie for Donald. We go back to 14. It's uh, very disappointing. Staring into the eyes there of Luke Donald over on the 17th tee. Should be a three iron for Luke today. I certainly wouldn't call this a birdie hole, Mark. We're just five all day. I, we did see a hole in one, but uh, not a lot of birdies. Luke bogeyed it yesterday in the third round. See if he can do a little better today. Is he losing it right? Yes, he is. So that will need to draw a good lie if it does. Luke Donald is bunkered at the 17th. Pretty straightforward shot, though. Nice and high on the up slope. The tour in Sam says Mark back in 2009 and 2010 short 17 and Luke Donald for a very important par. Another up and down from the bunker for Luke Donald. That is his 11th one putt of the day. And they are not booing. They're actually T shot for Luke Donald straight away par four elevated green. 
one back, but Ellis has a long par putt at 17. If he can put this ball on the fairway, Dan, it, it does make it a potential birdie hole. It's up the left. Oh, it gets a nice kick. That's going to leave a much longer second shot than we've seen from O. And Luke Donald going over the yardage with John McLaren for his second. You know, when you think about it, Dan, of all the guys up there on the leaderboard, this is the guy who has been in this type of situation most recently. Uh, remember at Disney when he came through uh, in the fall when he needed to win the tournament to uh, secure the number one position on the money list? He made all those birdies on the back nine. Up to 18. Yeah. Up he can shot. trip him at the no channel finding. And that adds to the, the difficulty, right. Dan, because it, being 36 feet uphill, first of all, it adds about seven or eight yards to the yardage, but the, you can't see the green. All you see is the flag stick just kind of coming up out of this bunker that guards the front of the green. Tough to hit the ball the right distance. Hung it out to the right. And that will work its way all the way to the edge of the green. Who knows? Back in our golf channel and on NBC coverage, Luke Donald, 72nd hole, long birdie look here. He's a part of the six-way tie for the lead at 13 under. Highly unlikely to see this putt go in. Not an easy putt, putting uh, up a relatively steep slope to start with. It gets up onto the level where the hole is cut. Should want to move to the left around the hole. This could eliminate Garrigus, who's in the clubhouse with a 13 under if it falls, but Garrigus has looked better and better at least the last few moments with no one really doing anything. Oh, that's always below the hole. So Donald, with that to tie Garrigus in at 13 under. Back on the tee, 18, where Donald is going to wrap up Gary yet another top 10 finish. This is going to be his 16th top 10 in his last 22. PGA Tour starts. It has just been an amazing run for Donald. Yeah, it really has been. Uh, just the so this is a big putt to get in at 13 under. That uh, would tie Garrigus in the clubhouse. Okay. So Donald Garrigus will wait and hope that no one gets to the 14 under number. 66 for Donald. So you got Luke Chance. You got Duke. Chant. <laughs> Got all sorts of stuff going on here. Well, great crowds here this week, too, Dan. Uh, record crowds for these uh, transitions championship this week. And thank you, Luke. You're in at 13 under par. Do you think that's enough? I'm hoping it's enough for a playoff. Uh, give myself a chance. Uh, played nicely today. Shot five under, no bogeys. Um, you know, could have uh, hit a couple better shots coming in, but. Uh, not happy with my position, and uh, hopefully it's good enough to get in the playoff. We were talking on the range before your final round, and you were saying it's important to kind of hover around that lead, those first six holes, and then you never know what's going to happen. So after the six holes, did you kind of look around to then form a strategy? Well, you know, I kind of had my eye on the leaderboard, and I thought, uh, you know, when I got to 13 under, when I birdied 11, I thought if I could get one or two more before, like, uh, the last few holes, which are playing tough, then that might be pretty good, and then just kind of, you know, hit middle of the greens and and and, and give myself opportunities. But uh, so uh, I, I didn't uh, had a good chance for, on birdie for 14, but uh, didn't quite make it. We'll watch and wait with you. All right, thanks. Cozy it up and join what will now be a four-man playoff. Luke Donald, Jim Furyk, if he makes it, Sang Moon team. Luke Donald, Jim Furyk, Robert Garrigus, and Sang Moon Bay. Heading back to 18. See if we can decide it. Who or when? Heading back to the T at 18 to meet Luke Donald and company. In the meantime, we show you how this four man playoff was for Birdie to get to 15 under par, which would have clearly put him in control of this golf tournament. And then to bogey 17 and 18, uh, you know, he has to be devastated. So the last two guys, Donald actually making his balls, but uh, you know, that's a long time to wait before you play another shot. So let's listen in as they 
determine the hitting order right there among the four. Host this week. Thanks, Good luck, Keith. Play well. Happy luck. Stay well. Good play. David Cole with Transitions Optical, our host this week, is going to help us out here with the draw. Good luck. We're going to play 18, 16, 17, and 18 in the playoff, gentlemen. Robert, you finish first. You'll draw first. Luke, you finish next. You'll draw second. Sang Moon Bay, you'll draw third. And Jim, you'll draw fourth. Yeah, what Robert? I got. Number two. One. Oh, of course. Uh, okay. There you Four. go. Three. Okay. Same so, moon, you'll lead us all. Gentlemen, play well. Well. So you heard Mark Russell say that Sang Moon Bay, the in the bunker and then kind of dribbled back down to the right. Ball will be well below his feet, but a lot better than it could have been. And here he is, Luke Donald, on the cusp of regaining that number one ranking again just a couple of weeks after relinquishing it to Rory. That ball up the right side and cutting. It's going to miss the fairway into that area where Jim Furyk played from, and it was a very heavy lie, some thick rough right there. We'll have to wait and see. So the early advantage to 34-year-old Robert Garrigus, who just pounded his tee shot up the 18th. For win number two, Luke Donald looking to regain the top spot on the world with his fifth PGA Tour in the first playoff hole. They will go to the snake pit 16, 17, 18, if necessary, Luke Donald. Looking over the yardage, first to play, Daddy. 152 yards just to the front of the green, 164 total. And Gary, you're right, it found that pretty lush patch and it settled down. Oh, the hit is horrible. Huh? Maybe in parts of spin on it. This is, uh, it goes in the bunk, it's got to be easy, and then it comes out a bit heavy and you know, yeah. 20 feet by. No problem by missing the fairway. Now it becomes a guess. Does the ball come out of here quickly? Or does it come out softly if you get it just a little bit heavy? Seven iron. You know, Luke. Not very, very high and right at the flag stick, Gary. You said it earlier, Gary, all these guys have not been in the mix of high-pressured stakes in the world of golf like Luke Donald has been the last couple of years. This was a thing of beauty from above. You know, Luke. Again, guesswork when you're coming yeah. a thick rough like that. Absolutely, and watch it barely carries the bunker. Hit it exactly where he needed to to get it close. And leaves himself a very makeable putt. So the first statement has well. Sudden death at the Transitions Championship. Unlikely that both Donald and Garrigus will miss. And the Luke chance have begun. Birdie putt to not only him a chance to seize it right back. And Dottie, this is uh, right below, staring right at it for the Ab win. Absolutely. Less break than anyone's had uphill. And you'd be hard pressed to find somebody with better tempo in the clutch than the Luke Donald when it comes to putting. Yeah, we've talked about it, how well he has putted this week. And his stroke, I love it how he just holds the putter after he makes contact. There's no rebound to the stroke. There it is. There is your new, new number one, Luke Donald. Wins the playoff, captures the 2012 Transitions Championship. Didn't miss a putt inside 10 feet today. Nails the birdie winner from six and a half feet. Just hit the perfect seven iron out of the rough to set this up. Now that was the incredible shot. And that putt just kind of sneaked in the left side. I mean, this one, if it had been a few inches longer, I'm not sure it would have gone in. But it was just good enough. 
So just like that, Luke Donald is back on top. Let's send it down to Steve Sands. You know, it's, a, it's another step uh, in the right direction towards hopefully uh, gaining some more confidence and, and, and trying to win majors. I mean, uh, you know, I feel like I've achieved a lot in my uh, career, but uh, that's obviously the missing step. But um, obviously, this is a perfect uh, preparation. I have two weeks off now and uh, looking forward to, to Augusta. We've been talking about this, trying to get back to number one spot. Is it more difficult to get to number one or to stay at number one? <laughs> I certainly was a lot more nervous the first time, uh, thinking about trying to get to number one. This uh, certainly wasn't my focus this time around. I was just focused on, on trying to win the tournament, and uh, it, it all works out. Congratulations. Thanks, Steve. Dan, let's go back to you. Thanks, Steve.